Alright guys, Hutch Crime again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Scrappy revealing a remarkable story from back at Major 2 in Miami, talking about how Toronto absolutely giga slammed the Carolina Royal Ravens at the event, and Clayser was not so happy about it. Also, a remarkable clip here from Shotzi on Persia's point of view in a scrim that they were playing the other day. Very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. Phenomenal tweet I thought from Hixie. I know that people are saying, oh, I can't believe you'd be so mean to beans, but you gotta understand, this is just prime bad. And, uh, as far as I'm concerned, but there are some other roster things to discuss as well. Of course, Beans to Boston is now a done deal that is locked in. But Surge, at least as of recording, this isn't confirmed yet. But rumour has it that yes, 0-4 to Surge is a thing. Kind of surprise. They've only made a one-man move. I think 0-4, cool. Good prospect. Very young guy. Lots of upside potentially. Honestly, great to see him get a chance in the league because he's been floating around a while. People thought he was cheating. And when you've got players that have risen the ranks that quickly... It's almost certainly that they're worthy of a chance. But I think for Surge, after he's gone, Brezzi, who can, um, of course, a booter to stay. It's very interesting what they're going to do with that team. People have thought, well, could you have got rid of Brezzi as well? Who was potentially under the firing line as well? Of course, that never happens. There was brief talk about Cobra coming in. That didn't happen either. So, bit of a mess. Obviously, we'll see if Surge can somehow find a way to improve because, sure, Arsati's veteran player, double world champion, all the event victories, but there was an argument that in certain circumstances, last stage, Age, they were basically playing three versus four. Now, also, Minnesota Rocker seems like this is now locked in. We talked about the trials the other day, the Illy situation. The feeling is with Illy, by the way, is that the scrims just simply didn't go particularly well. I don't know how much of that is the truth and how much of it's the fact that maybe Seattle Surge from a buyout side are problematic. But the general feeling seems to be that, yeah, they brought Illy in. He didn't really, not exactly perform necessarily, but the team wasn't performing well with him in, and therefore he's gone. And that's also the the other question, I think, for Illy, sure, he's been away from several months. Maybe you shouldn't expect him to step into scrims and immediately fry again. But I think, potentially, if you're trialling Illy and he doesn't play especially well in the trials, then it does raise the question as to whether whatever was going on a few months ago with Illy is actually more of a big deal, i.e. can Illy perform at a very high level without whatever he was, you know, potentially, you know, the caffeine, let's say, that he was utilising in seemingly rather high doses way back at Major 1. So that's a question. Speaking of Arsatis, though, Omic GG, they brought him in. So it is going to be Arsatis classic Dak and Vivid. Dak was rumoured to join a couple of teams. He's had a couple of trials now, Dak, in the league. They've not seemingly gone anywhere. Vivid, obviously off the Minnesota Rocker. He's coming in here as well. And then Arsatis in classic because, yeah, gunless was meant to be here, but now he's going to the Minnesota Rocker, as we full well know. So that's kind of the roster stuff as it stands for now. A couple of interesting clips were still going around here on the whole ordnance glove situation from the other day. We know that the subliners had many things up their sleeve, wall bangs, nade lineups, all this type of stuff. Apparently they had even more to come as well, because that's what Hydra apparently said here to Octane, is that yeah, they had more tools in their kind of toolbox as it were. I do wonder whether in hindsight, subliners will think, you know what, it probably makes sense that these teams would GA it because that's just what they do. You bring out something somewhat overpowered that one team is better at than others. The incentive is, even if it's not the right thing to do, the incentive is for all the other teams to say, well, they're ahead of the curve on this. If we just ban it, then that kind of, you know, nerfs them without us having to put in any effort. Like, what would the teams prefer? New York subliners have all these great nade spots and all this stuff that they've come up with to, you know, gain a competitive advantage. The pros say, well... We're going to do that ourselves and we're going to learn all those things ourselves and we're going to put in all the time and effort to actually come up with some of these ideas ourselves. But even then, New York will still be somewhat ahead of the curve. Or we just say as a collective, yeah, let's just ban it. That makes it easier for everyone. So if you're subliners, you might be thinking, well, if we just save those for the World Championship, then all of a sudden it wouldn't be GA'd in time, which is certainly possible. So I'll share a couple of clips here. <laughs> Yo, Paco, I can't believe they're nerfing you guys. I don't even know if he's still here. He probably rated me and left. I can't believe they nerfed the New York subliner chat. They got cooked in the knowledge category, and the whole league said, never again. Paco started wall banging people. They had ordinance nades, and the whole league was like, yo, I'm not doing this. That's just cringe. They did, bro. They just don't want to put in the extra work. You know what I'm saying, Paco? They just don't want to, they just don't want to put in that extra effort, man. It's a gap. It's a knowledge gap. They're trying to dumb the game down. Can't believe it. No wall bang, nothing. 
It's okay, Paco. It's okay, man. I mean, they just they just can't adapt, dude. I had so many more. <laughs> Are you talking about those gloves that just got GA'd? No, that's yeah. Ordnance. No, 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 that's the ones you throw. Um, yeah, like you throw across the yeah, map. Why, why did that get GA'd? You can move off spawn without getting made. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so the other team doesn't just make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think Scrap was getting spawnated all Karachi. Dude, I mean, dude me, what do you mean? Brandy got three piece. I got three piece. Oh, you got three piece. <laughs> Basically, round eleven got three piece. Jesus. The, the, the wall bangs, I don't really give a fuck about it. The wall bangs are just... I'm actually mind blown. The, the A, Ace and D one that New York got actually worked. Yeah, that was insane. Wait, that timing actually, must have been crazy. You probably won't see that like again. Nah, but that... probably like, actually won't see a killer. Yeah. Another clue I wanted to show actually here from Purge was very entertaining. So here's, uh, well, Predator. The boys getting the scrims ready to go again as well over the last couple of days. Finally, I think practice is back on the way for these guys. And this is one of the examples. This reminds me of a clip from right at the start of the game, actually, when I'm pretty sure it was uh, Draza who was seeing Shotzi do something like this. I think it was on Invasion, maybe, and he got Charles. But this is, I mean, when you see something like this, it can only be one player, you know what I mean? There's only one player whose movement looks like this. And also it's kind of because a lot of players, they don't have like the dolphin dive and the slide on. They do one or the other. But here comes Shotzi out of top secret. And I don't, I don't know really how he does this, right? I mean, I know how he does it on the actual stick. But like nobody else can pull some of this type of stuff off. He dolphin dives midair and then turns around midair. I mean, this just looks unbelievable from Purge's point of view. And this guy's looking at it thinking, this guy's top. Like, I'm just going to leave him. All right, you can go about your day, Shotzi. That's fine. I'm not going to go and chow you. Speaking of Optic as well, Dashi became the first player this year to log over an hour of hill time, which, okay... It doesn't really mean much. It's kind of a quirky stat, but it's definitely interesting, right? So he's logged to over nearly 4,000 seconds of hill time this year. Sure that part of that is the fact that they played a lot of series, right? If you're on a top 12 team, you're not playing that many series at majors, so you're getting less opportunity to rack up the hill time, as it were. But still, he has over a thousand seconds more than the next player down with insight. So, in terms of being a hill demon this season, Dashi has definitely been the man for that. But I wanted to share this clip as well. So, they ran another episode of the new Toronto Ultra, I forget what they call it, something like Players Only or something. It's, um, well, basically game chat that Optic have done, but here they are. Now, Clinics isn't here. He was back in Denmark. He was attending the CS Major, if you guys didn't see that the other day. This is Flux, OG kind of British player, and of course now the head coach of this roster. Insight, Envoy, and Scrappy return as usual. And it's funny, this week they leveled up, right? Because not only... Last week was funny, if you guys watched the first episode, or when it was a couple of weeks ago now, because they didn't have mic stands, first of all. So they were holding these Shaw microphones. Pretty nice mics. This is the one I've got here in their hand rather than on an actual mic stand and then they had like water bottles on the table but it's like they couldn't drink water because they had to hold the mic in one hand so it was a pretty funny first episode and uh, hey we actually have some mic stands can you believe it so this is a great episode as well they got through a lot of grounds here there were a few interesting things that i noted down one of which was certainly from the major itself in miami so clay and scrap we know they had a bit of a back and forth at the start of the season scrappy was talking trash and saying oh well you know looks like another great top 12 performance performance of you guys this year and all this stuff and to be fair Clay's been pretty good and they've made it relatively deeper-ish compared to where you might expect them to be in the first couple of tournaments they've played and you can also argue and this is always the case that people say well Scrappy only talks trash to the bad teams the bad players because he's too scared to do it against some of the top teams which is maybe there's some truth to that but at the same time he has been beefing a lot with Draza lately and he doesn't seem to beef much with Optic Scrappy just because he's boys with those guys and maybe also because he might think about joining Optic at some point. I don't know if there's anything in that. But I will share what he had to say about Clay Steer because the PPAs is what they call them. The player, like the personal player areas or whatever it is. So that's kind of where the players set up shop behind the scenes. Now, depending on the venue, you have different, more or less space, shall we say, to actually play and practice. At the Optic, um, the Esports Stadium Arlington or whatever, pretty much every team has their own room. In the Toronto Major, I think the PPA is some of them are backstage and then some of them are in like the locker rooms, if you guys remember that from last year. And then some, you know, events, they don't really have much room at all. Like in Boston, they had, okay, a couple of rooms, but a lot of the time you've got teams pretty much just in front of each other back to back with a curtain between them, which is where they can warm up and play. And there's like no space at all. They're just, you know, cramped in there and they're trying to make it work. It's, it gets pretty hot in those rooms, as you can probably understand. So in Miami, apparently this was the case and the uh, scrap and the boys on Toronto were doing a bit of a warm-up scrim against uh, the Ravens just before they played their series against Vegas on the Thursday and well Clay wasn't so happy with the outcome it seems. 250 to 17 that is a that is one of the funniest things that I've ever done. <laughs> oh the PPA. We yeah. 250 to 17 Carolina 
and then you had some words to say to them. Yo, <laughs> they I just, are right behind us. Right our behind, PBA yeah. is here. Carolina. All it is, here. it's just like for anyone that doesn't know what PBA is, it's just a curtain. So like, right, you can just wipe that open. The team's right there. We beat. I mean, should we say the team? I just oh, said he's, it. He's oh, I just okay, okay. Carolina. He's just, he's Carolina, he's Carolina right dropped. behind us. We went <laughs> on Rio two fifty seventeen. Right. It was honestly just like we're running at him, just winning every gunfight. Yeah. I just swing open the things I said. Holy, f- are we lagging over here? <laughs> and bro, Clay stared at me and said, "Get the fuck!" He was so mad. At- and then like, bro, we could hear everything they're saying. Bro, it w- I was in tears. I was in literal tears after I like came back to our PPA. Clay was tweaking, and uh, it was good. It was good. That was actually insane. Was that a warm up? That was a warm up. I was think was it there? No, that was on the Friday. That was Vegas. That was, that was on the Vegas. Friday. Thursday. Oh, I was on Thursday. We were warming Friday. them up. Or? No, oh, yeah, they were warming we... us up. We played Vegas. Remember, we were like, dude, we wasted our rep. Yeah. Because oh, we like went down a hundred. Yeah, 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 that's true. Right. That's true. Yeah. yeah, that was a and slow we start. Flawless HP after that, like, after we went down hundred against Vegas. Yeah, yeah, that was our HP was looking kind of nice. We won't talk about this. Well, no. no, we're not talking about that. <laughs> the, the, nah. Both of those we're not talking about. Draws a time li- draws a drama on the timeline. That's you, bro. That's all yeah, you. Yeah, that's you. Fucking hoop that's <laughs> on me. Uh, yeah. um, no, but yeah, no, draws been going rogue. Just draws. You can go check my tweets. I haven't tweeted anything. <laughs> <laughs> but interesting, it must be noted, right, that after slamming the Ravens in this one, Ravens ended up top six and Toronto ended up top four, right? So it wasn't like a massive differential in terms of how they placed in the tournament. Scrappy had a you know, good performance at the Major 2 land, but as a team, they weren't quite the same. And they talked about that on the podcast as well. Envoy was saying, yeah, like I did not play my best. And there were lots of reasons as to why that was the case. The controller issue, the fact that it broke, you had to use an old one was one of them. Just the state of the venue in general and they had a general feeling Toronto that they had done so well during Major 1 they tried to replicate a lot of that for Major 2 and it wasn't really quite working maybe these map set changes are the key to turning that around but also I think Insight individually needs to just play better to be perfectly honest than he has said in recent times but we'll see if this scrappy versus clay rivalry continues we've got to say 250 to 17 that reminded me of the 250 to 14 if you guys remember that one I'll give you a couple of seconds if you got to remember when it was it was Raid Hardpoint Black Ops Cold War Tron Ultra versus Los Angeles Thieves that's why they called them instead of 100T 14T for some time because they got chucked in the 14 point club by Tron Ultra different Toronto team a couple of similar players obviously scrappy wasn't there back then neither was Envoy and that was actually in a professional match right but pretty rare that regardless of the circumstances you get a, a team that goes down that emphatically and this is probably why you know Scrappy and those Toronto guys are really confident on maps like Rio and other maps like I imagine Vista and potentially Six Star as well coming in is that you know they're going to be at a 20 point club teams like Ravens on a map like that speaking of Envoy thought this is interesting it's a while ago now this is posted but I had it saved up so I thought now is probably the time Envoy versus Apathy who is the highest player on your overall tier list? To me, in terms of like player rankings of all time, to me, it's probably still going to be Apathy. But I can see the argument in some regards. They've both won the same amount of events. Apathy is, however, a two-time world champion. Finals appearances across multiple different cards, won in multiple different cards, you know, finals appearances. Their numbers aren't too dissimilar. But I just think that Apathy having the double ring and at his peak, I think is a stronger player than Envoy is at his peak, personally, at least relative to where the rest of the league is. Is. So I'm leaning Apathy on this one. If Envoy gets a second ring, sure, then there's maybe a debate. Just before we close out the video, I wanted to mention this. So Breaking Point looking for your feedback, guys, on basically anything at CDL related you'd like to see from us or elsewhere. There were some sensational responses that we got yesterday. So feel free to keep flooding us with suggestions, such as this one on screen right now. But um, yeah, if you guys would like to help us out, we'd really appreciate it. I'll leave a link down below. It should be pretty fun to just go through and tick some boxes and just um, let us know what you think of the website, the content, the scene in general who your favorite team is this type of stuff and uh, yeah it'd be great to know and get your feedback on how we can do things better on the website and just in other regards as well so yeah we'd really appreciate that very much interested to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time